Hey, hey guys, Z here from Build a Business You Love, teaching you all things about event space ownership, about event space startup, and about event space management, okay? <music> If you guys are interested in owning one or you already have an events-based business, this, this channel is for you guys. We talk about things that really people don't discuss, right? The things that people pay $10,000 for. So we're going to be talking today about um, finding a commercial space because this is one of the hardest things and the most, <sighs> the issue that people well, I'll say one of the, the 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 top issues that people have when uh, getting started, right? If you don't know who I am, I'm Z. I build the business you love. And um, I'm here to just show you the ins and outs of what goes on uh, in event space ownership. Because uh, a lot of people don't know until they get into it. And then it's too late, right? You need to know before you get in. <laughs> So you stay here, guys, with me for about five, ten minutes um, while we go through just some tidbits, some tips, um, going through, you know, how to search for a, a commercial space, a place where you can put your business, where it makes sense, okay? And if you don't already know, I have a course out, the Ultimate Event Space Course 2.0 that teaches you all of these things. And also, I have a freebie bundle, guys, that actually has, I believe it's 20 questions that you can ask your county, right, on finding a space. The important questions before you sign the lease, because I'm seeing people signing the lease and they don't know what they're getting into. They're signing these leases, honey, and they can't even have their event space there. And now they're stuck and have to find something to do with that space because it's a legal document. They can sue you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, this is just some tidbits uh, about some things that you can kind of consider, okay? When we're talking about checking for zoning, um, checking for um, some of the things that, you know, you need to go over before signing that lease. And the first one is zoning, okay? Zoning, zoning, checking your zoning regulations. Like I said, I do have 20 questions that you can ask your uh, county, your planning department, your buildings department. It's free. Check it out. It should be a link somewhere below here. I'll try to put it. Um, it is basically a way for you to determine if this space is good to continue researching. If this space is good to continue to determine if this is where I want to have my business, right? Because if you can't have your business there, if they say no, it's not allowed in this particular building because of X, Y, and Z, God knows why then you can't have your business there. And it doesn't make sense to continue, right? Other people will say, hey, just look through the window and see if you can put your space there. But I know that you guys are realizing that you cannot just find a space and put up an event space in there, an event space business in that space. It's way more to it, okay? So um, the first one we get it into is the zoning laws. Determining what type of business could operate in certain areas. That's what it basically is, right? And you want to know within your county, if you found the space, does it make sense? A lot of times when you call the county guys and they ask you, they're going to ask you, hey, do you have a place in mind? You have an address in mind. Give them any address for now, just so you can get your questions going. And so you could see, uh, get an example of what they can tell you. You know what I mean? So have, have a... a uh, um, an idea of where, you know, a place that you're kind of looking at, give them that example, give them that location, and they'll, they can answer those questions for you. Now, even in my course, I tell you, you're going to get some wrong answers with your department of buildings, your department of planning. They may tell you, oh yeah, you can do that. And you don't need an architect and you don't need this and you don't need that. And then when it gets to it, you say, oh, I'm so sorry. They told you that. That was incorrect information. This is why I tell people to call two, three times for the place that you want, that you're about to sign that lease on. You call. You ask to speak to an inspector, okay? Because it matters. When 
you're signing a lease and you're putting your name on a line and you're putting your financials on a line, you need to know these things. That's why I teach you guys this framework, okay? It has to make sense. It has to make sense. So you can't put a commercial business in a residential area. Could you imagine a big McDonald's inside of right by your um your house, like right next to it, right? In your community, it may not work, right? Certain situations it may work. Like New York is a it has a lot of mixed buildings, right? Where it may be a commercial space on the bottom and a, a residential at the top, which I do not recommend. <laughs> I do not recommend that. Uh, get putting your event space at the bottom with this residence at the top. Can you guess why? The noise. It's going to be noise complaints. It's going to be issues with um, people around the building. It's going to, it's just, just, if you have it, a space that has a, a commercial space at the bottom, residence at the top, just, just think about it. I'll say that. Think about it. Okay. Um, and in the course, I go over exactly why, detail by detail. Um, also consider parking. A lot of when you have to re or when the county or the fire department has to reevaluate the buildings department, whoever does it in your county, has to reevaluate the CFO for your business, for your location. They're going to look at the parking. They're going to say there's not enough parking to have this amount of people. And a lot of times the um, fire department, planning department, whoever decides on the CFO in your county is going to base it on how many parking space spaces there are. They're going to base the amount of occupants you can have in your space based on the amount of parking. I've seen people with a space 10,000 square feet. You, it's, it has little to no parking and they have little to no occupancy. They can't have a lot of people in there at one time. It just is what it is. A lot of, they have their own, you know, regulations. Okay. And we're not going to get too much into that. Just know that it should have plenty of parking, uh, especially for larger events. And it's a, it's also a key selling point guys. If you have, um, a space with, you know, a lot of parking, ample parking. That's a, a selling feature, okay? A unique selling feature for your space. Um, like I said, places like New, New York, I always mention New York because it's different. There is no parking. There is no parking. So other things are considered when um, you're getting the a CFO for uh, places, buildings in New York. New York is very different, okay? So, um... The next one is verifying a good place that has accessibility. For ADA guys, they are implementing Americans Disability Act for a lot of these new businesses. That means it has to have access to ramps, elevators, even the bathroom has to fit a wheelchair comfortably. So when you're looking at a space, look for those things. Okay, if it doesn't have it, maybe that could be something that you could negotiate in the lease. Okay, it's because compliance, ADA compliance these days, they're not turning their heads like they used to. Um, a lot of businesses and <sighs> there's so many different rules surrounding ADA. Like in your county, it may say, oh, if you have a business that's more than X, Y, and Z, or if you have a business that... Um, is is more than this square footage or has a CFO of this amount, then you have to comply. Otherwise, you can't comply or you don't have to comply. Whereas the ADA is like, um, no, you have to comply. So it's kind of like that gray area, you know, when it comes to when it comes to accessibility, but it's something you need to consider for your business. Okay. Ensuring that you have two means of egress, exits, entrances. Places that you can leave from. It cannot include a window. Okay, if something were to happen, safety, general safety rules, something were to happen, people need to be able to get the heck out of there. So it's typically mandated by the building codes and um, fire safety regulations. And But if you're hosting a large group of people, then yeah, you would like to see at least two means of egress. So when you're looking for a space, it needs to have at least two means of egress, okay? Okay. Um, and you may not be cleared from from your fire department or from your um your I call them the powers that be in my course. 
uh, or from your planning department, whoever it is that gives you the CFO, if you have to change your CFO, um, it has to make sense for them too. And a lot of times, especially these days, they're asking for more. They're asking for more. They want to see those two means of egress. They want to see that people can leave out safely. They want to make sure that the places uh, have been uh, looked at by an architect and can handle the load. And in my course, I'll tell you why. Uh, evaluate the size and the layout. So I've seen spaces that are big, right? But the layout sucks. Like the layout sucks. Like the ceilings are below or um, the the way that it's broken up is weird, right? It'll have a room here and a room here and you got to find out if the, 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 the walls are load bearing and all of these things, right? And so you want to make sure that um, the space can accommodate the... People want to see openness. People want to see spaces, their event space that, that they selected for their baby shower, kids party, bridal shower, wedding party, whatever it is. They want to see a big open pretty space, right? or whatever it is that art space or um, a bouncy space, whatever, you know, you decide to, how you decide to do your event space. It should be an open floor plan. And some spaces don't have that. And you'll be sitting here thinking, oh, I could just break down that wall. And the wall is a load bearing wall. Now you have to get an architect to come out to do that. And you have to pay them to do that. And you have to get a construction company to make sure that the load can can support it matters okay so make sure you evaluate the size and the layout because the layout is something that people don't consider okay um the next one is inspecting the necessary utilities and amenities i go over this so much in the course because people sleep on the fact that you're gonna need utilities you're gonna need electricity the hvac needs to work right? You're going to need systems in place. And a lot of times, a lot of leases, we go over leases in a course too, say that it's on you. It matters. You need to know what you're getting into. Things like, you know, and everything requires electric. Everything requires, you know, water. Everything requires HVAC systems because it gets hot where you are or it gets cold where you are. It's got to make sense. And um, you got to be able to handle the load. In my course, I talk about <laughs> I talk about um, a demand meter and what that is and why it's important and how to deal with it if you have one. Uh, the next one is to evaluate the neighborhood and foot traffic. So just because you have a space and it's pretty and it's beautiful, you may want to have something that can can, you know, where people could see that, you know, you have a lot going on. You have events at this location and that, you know, people are not just hanging around. That's another thing. And that it's a, a vibrant neighborhood that can attract more bookings, right? The last thing you want to do is have a neighborhood that's kind of sketchy and you have your event space business in a neighborhood that's kind of sketchy. People are not going to want to patronize you. They're not going to want to patronize you because they know what's there and they know what happens there at night or, you know, during the off hours. And people, they have options. So, and selecting a place, make sure you select a place that's not sketchy. It matters. Um, that's convenient, that has access to foot traffic. And, you know, I, I know of a, a, of a couple who, they have a great space, great foot traffic, and they also have uh, driving traffic as well. I mean, they're like close to, very close to a highway. It look, it's great, a great location. I'm like, this is a great location. So things like that you want to, you know, look at and consider when you have your event space. Um, the last one I'm going to talk about is understanding the terms and the flexibility in your lease and in your contract. It's, guys, things like, you know, renovations, HVAC systems, rent escalations, lease durations, all the things that I talk about in my course in very good detail, because I am a real estate broker as well. Um, renovations, all of, those th all, all of those things. There's flexibility, or you can ask for flexibility in a lot of the negotiations, because um, when it comes down to understanding the terms of your lease, it, it can come back to haunt you. It can come back to haunt you if you don't have the correct terms, if you don't have the correct flexibility, um, 
And I always recommend having a, an attorney look over it to make sure that you're covered. You know, these leases nowadays, I, I say it in the course, it's the landlord's lease. They're doing these triple net leases. It's the landlord's lease. And you have to put in clauses that protect you as, as a business, right? And protect your business and your business's needs because it's the landlord's lease, okay? I'm Z from Build a Business You Love, and I hope you enjoyed this, um, this, this video. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And also feel free to, you know, subscribe to my channel. And I hope this helps someone. And don't forget to check out the course, guys. It's awesome. If you think this is good, check out that course. Later.